Hey guys, Michael here. In this video, I am going to show you the basics of how to make a Google site using the new Google Sites. And yes, I say the new Google Sites, not to be confused with the classic Google Sites, which still exists, um, which is really horrible and gross and so very 1990s. Don't go there. We are using new Google Sites, simply called Google Sites. So let's go. If you are here looking for how you can create a copy of a template like this beauty here, then that is coming up later in the video. So you can skip ahead to that if you need to. So to start with, we're going to go over to sites.google.com forward slash new. And that will take you to the new Google Sites page. And if you have made any websites before, you will see them sitting here. And to get started on a new site, you simply click on the Create New Site button down the bottom here. So when you start a new site, you have a screen like this. And you've got all the tools you need on the right, and you've got your website in the middle. It's a little bit like a Word document that has nothing on it. It kind of works in a similar sort of way, although a bit different as well. This is your header area at the top and you can set your header type to a whole range of things. Title only, not very nice. Banner is pretty good. Large banner is good for a home page or the cover is fills up the whole screen when you launch it. This is pretty good too. I probably would go large banner for a front page and banner for every other page. So let's go with large banner. Then you can change the image. You can select an image from the stock images that are available or you can actually do a search for images or to your Google Drive folder and you can find something there or you can even upload images as well by clicking on upload so you can make your banner nice. You can choose from a small selection of themes and each theme can be altered to choosing a different color set or modifying it to your own choice. Um, each theme has a few fonts, not many. Um, and the idea is that your website will have a consistent um, look and style across the whole website. So it's pretty much one font for the whole website. So setting up new pages is simple. Click on the pages option there and you'll see that at the moment we've just got the home page. Down here at the bottom, we've got a button here for adding a new page, or you can have a link to another website in your navigation area here. So let's click on new page, and let's add our first page, and we'll just call it new page. That'll do. Click on done, and there's our new page. So the page is called new page, and it automatically creates a heading called new page, which you can get rid of, move around, or delete and change for something else. If you change this one to something else, it doesn't change the name of the page. That stays the same. And the same goes for if I change the name of the page, which I can do by clicking on there, and going to Properties. It doesn't change that either. So then you can create more pages, lots of pages, And once you've created your pages, you can easily move them around by just dragging them around there like this, reorder them. You can also change the hierarchy of your website so you can create sub pages. So for example, let's just say you want the new beginning page to be at the top here or near the top. You can do that. Then you can put new morning inside it like that and it becomes a sub page and you'll see up here, it now sits there. I can do the same for New Dawn. I can put that inside New Beginning like that and it becomes underneath that. I can also put it inside that one. So it becomes a sub page of that, but that gets a little bit confusing. Don't want to complicate it. So you can move things around as you need to. You've got your pages at the top here. I can change where those are visible on my website. So over here on the left under navigation settings, when I click on that, I can change it to side so that they sit there or back to the top. 
So adding content to your website is super easy. So underneath the header, we want to add some maybe some writing or a picture or whatever. Just double click and it brings up this little wheel. You can get those same items there from over here as well if you don't want to double click. But the first one is the text box. It's in the middle, probably, probably because it's the most common. When the text comes up, you've got some limited options at the moment. And notice that the theme color comes through on the heading text as well. I can add more underneath. So I can move text around, change the order. I can join text boxes together like that. So now they are one and I can move them around. We can resize the text boxes like that. What did I do? I separated them. If you click on one individually, you can separate them out again. And you'll notice here on the side that there's different sections. The way it works is the website is divided into horizontal sections that I can grab from here and swap them around. So I can put as much content into that section there as I like. And if I want to move things around, I can. If I want to duplicate a section, I can. If I want to change the background, again, the color is based on the theme color that I've chosen. You can do all those sorts of things. You can delete entire sections. So when you resize an object, you'll notice these lines come up, these vertical lines. This is like the vertical space within each section. Inserting images is easy. You can do it from here. You can upload or you can select from the, the web. You can do that from here as well. Double click images. You can also just drag in images off your computer as well or copy and paste them from the web, whatever you want to do. You don't have to click on the image button to do that. Moving images around is easy. Moving them between the different sections is simple enough. You can also resize the images. When you do that, you can click on the uncrop button and it will resize it back to normal shape. You can crop it in that way. You can crop it this way. Lots of things you can do with images. You can make an image a button, a linkable, clickable button by inserting link on the button here like this. You can insert it to an existing page on your website or you can send it to a actual website. To help you set up content on your website there's these layout options here that you can just click on and they will appear in their own section. When you click on one of those you can add an image, you can add a YouTube video, you can add a calendar, you can add a map from Google Maps, lots of options there and it gives you these little text areas as well to put in underneath. You don't have to stick with it once you've put it there. You can change things around if you want to. There's nothing stopping you altering them. They're just nice quick little layout helps to help you make your website look really nice and snazzy. There's lots of things down the side here you can include. Collapsible text is interesting. Table of contents is okay. Image carousel is quite good if you want images to rotate through um, one after the other, that's quite good. You can add buttons, fairly simple buttons with text and divider lines are nice and easy. YouTube videos, like I said before, you can search for a video on YouTube. Actually, when you are on YouTube, you can copy a link and come straight back to here and paste it straight down. You don't have to go via here. So there's options. One of the most powerful options in Google Sites is the ability to embed other Google documents into your website. So if I click on slides, for example, it'll bring up my most recent slides and I can add them in quite easily. So let's just add that one in. And that is now embedded into the website.
At the bottom of the website, there is an option to add a footer, which means whatever you put in that footer will be on every page of your website. At any stage, you can preview your website to see what it would look like on different devices. So up here, the preview button gives you these options. This is what my website would look like on a desktop computer. This is what it would look like on a tablet. And this is what it would look like on a phone. Notice how the content on your page will shift around depending on what device it is being looked at on. So be aware when you're designing your website what it will look like on different devices depending on who your audience is. To get out of that preview, just click on the exit preview button here. So even though Google saves your website automatically for you in your Google Drive, it isn't published until you publish it. So publishing it means that the rest of the world or whoever your audience is can view your website. So we go up to the publish button and then we need to select the name for our website. If you're in this college domain, then this will be part of your website address. You just need to add the extra bit that will go on the end. Make sure that the name hasn't been taken already and if it hasn't, a little tick will come up. And who can view my site? You can manage that here. So the default for my college is that anyone in the college can view it. But we can change that to different options here. And when you're happy with that, just click publish. You'll notice when it is published, you'll have a little extra down arrow here. You can come along and look at your settings. You can review changes and publish again. Or you can view the published site, which is always a good idea to see how it looks like in the real world. So this is now a real website. As the owner of the website, you will have an option here to click and go back to editing your website. Whenever you make changes to your website, like that, your changes will not be visible until you publish it again. So if I go back to viewing the published site, that new word isn't there. So I need to go back and publish it again. What it does do is it brings up a preview of what the old version looked like or what the current version is versus what the draft is. And this is a good idea. So you can make lots of edits um, to your draft version and wait till you are happy before you actually publish it for the world to see. If your website needs to be a collaboration with others, you can easily share your website with others by adding people as contributors. So I can invite people here with their email address and I can decide whether they can edit or just view the published site. But editing is um, the option we're looking at here. All of this comes in handy when you have a template site that you need to duplicate and edit. So let's have a look at that in more detail. So here we have a website template that has been shared with me. It's got lots and lots and lots of pages and it would take a while to have to make that for yourself. So I can make my own copy of this. So let's just say um, your teacher has made a template for you or a colleague has made a template for you to use. You can then go up to the three little dots here and duplicate that site. When you click on that, you can give it a name and click duplicate. This can take a while. You'll get a notification down the bottom saying copy started, check your emails for updates. So all I need to do really is go back to sites.google.com forward slash new and there's the template and here's the copy. So when I open it up, here it is, ready to edit. I hope this was a useful video. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.